Well, praise the Lord, Facebook family and friends. Once again, this is Pastor Kevin Wright. Amen. Uh, with New Beginnings Christian Life Center Church here, right outside of Jackson, Mississippi. Once again, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, how many of y'all glad to be in church today? Amen. Praise God. I mean, how many of y'all are glad to worship the Lord today, even though we might not be in person? But how many of you know that we are the church? Amen. The church is on the inside of us. Amen. Praise God. So has God been good to you? Let me tell you, he's been so good. God is good all the time to me and to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just to remind you before we get started, and then I'll remind you a little bit later on. Praise God. Don't forget that next Sunday we, we will be celebrating, uh, amen, the first lady's birthday. Uh, which is Sunday, October 25th. That's the day in which we'll be celebrating her birthday. So, you know, whichever way you choose to celebrate her, that's up to you. Amen. So we just want to let you know, we're going to do a little something special next week. You know, we can't do a whole lot of things special because of the, you know, the pandemic and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, we're going to do a little something there next Sunday, which is, what is it? October 25th. And now the actual day of her birthday is October the 29th. And that's the actual day of her birthday. And that's October 29th, praise God. But we're going to celebrate it the Sunday before October 29th, which is the 25th. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, how many of you guys are ready to get into God's word? I said, how many of you all are ready to get into God's word? Well, let's look to the Lord in prayer. In Jesus name. Heavenly Father, once again, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, we do count of the honor and the privilege to get into your word. And Father, we just thank you right now in Jesus name that your word shall go forth and it shall not return void, but it shall accomplish what it was set forth to do. And that is to first of all, feed our spirit, man, then to renew our minds and heal our physical bodies. And Lord, we just thank you today for the great teacher among us, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us into all truth. Lord, I thank you that I'll not miss it to the left nor to the right, but I'll follow your perfect will concerning this subject. And Lord, we just thank you that my tongue is like that of a ready writer, ready to write upon the heart to your people, your uncompromised, holy, and infallible word. And Lord, we just thank you today that we should always give you the praise, honor, and glory for everything that comes forth from the word of God. So we covenant with you in advance to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, all that agree with this prayer, shout it. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Well, turn with me to 3 John, verse 2. Amen. Praise God. 3 John, uh, verse 2. Now, I believe on Facebook, uh, I put a different subject on there. And, and uh, amen, yeah, and uh, that was not the right subject, amen, praise God, amen, so we had put that on Facebook, and, uh, and and I think we put it also on our website, and I just got in front of myself, I forgot that this Sunday, we're going to be talking about how to overcome deadly emotions, amen, uh -huh. we're going to be talking about how to overcome deadly emotions. Emotions. So we're going to be concluding this series on deadly emotions today. And as we always say, you know, you don't learn everything that you need to know in the word of God uh, because God's word is pregnant. It always gives birth to new facets of revelation knowledge, but you have to just simply unhook. Amen. Praise God. And that's what we're going to be doing today on the subject of deadly emotions. And uh, up until this point, uh, we have covered uh, multiple different deadly emotions such as anger. You know, we talked about anger. We talked about pride. We talked about lust, which is an inordinate desire or affection for someone or, to, or something. We talked about fear and we talked about worry as well. And, and so, you know, we, we had uh, presented to you some of these deadly emotions. And of course, there are many more uh, deadly emotions. Amen. Uh, we've, we've already covered there's nothing wrong uh, uh, with having emotion. Make sure that we get control of our emotions or they will become deadly. Amen. 
Praise God. So again, we are emotional creatures. So I don't want y'all to go too far with this and say, is pastor saying that it's not good to have emotions? No, I didn't say that. You said that. I said, but we got to get control of our emotions. Amen. I said, amen. amen. Because if you don't get control of your emotions, they will eventually become deadly emotions. Now, just one example. Remember, Jesus said, be angry, but sin not. Anger is an emotion, but if you allow it to go too far, you'll get over into sin, okay? But there's nothing wrong with being angry. He said, be angry, but sin not. Don't go too far with it. When you get over there trying to murder folk, hurt people, adding to the demise of other people. See, now you're getting over into sin. You're getting over into things that you ought not to be, amen? amen. Praise God. So again, we are emotional creatures. I do admit that, and, and, and we embrace that. You know, man is a tripart being. Man is a spirit. He possesses a soul that deals with his mind, will, and emotions, and he lives in a physical body. Amen. So I do acknowledge that. I do understand that. But we got to get control of our emotions. Amen. And so that's where this teaching came from. And we called it deadly emotions. Amen. Amen. But let's go to our text scriptures. Third John, verse 2. Third John verse two, and we'll begin here with our text scriptures, and then we'll get over into uh, how to overcome our deadly emotions. Now, up until this point, I've given you a few little clues, but we're going to really exegete and dive into how to overcome these deadly emotions. Third John verse two said, "Beloved, how many of you are the beloved of God?" That simply means born again. Those who name the name of Christ, okay? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper, your mind, will, and emotions. Yeah. Now, you need to note this. Our soul experiences emotional prosperity when we successfully rule over our emotions, okay? Mm -hmm. Our soul will experience emotional prosperity, as, as what John, the Apostle John here is saying, our soul will experience emotional prosperity when we successfully rule over our emotions, amen? Praise God. There's nothing wrong with having emotions, but just make sure emotions don't have you. Yeah. I said there's nothing wrong with having emotions, but just make sure that your emotions do not have you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, you know, we had a lot of different things to say uh, about deadly emotions. We talked about how emotions can be very fickle. Mm -hmm. They can be very unstable. Amen. Strong emotions can lead to deadly results when the Holy Spirit does not control them. I went on to say that we are not to be driven or manipulated by deadly emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Amen. And let's take a look at verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Notice here what the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Rome. He says here, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, uh, be ye transformed. Uh, there's got to be a metamorphosis that take place, a complete change mm. by the renewing of your mind, or you could say will and emotions, by the renewing of your mind, will and emotions, that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So we start out with the Apostle John said, uh, uh, he talks about soul prosperity. Yes, he, he wants you to be in good health, but even as thy soul prosper, okay? Yeah. The Lord wants our soul to prosper, which is our mind, will, and emotions, amen? Uh, uh, that our mind, will, and emotions need to come under subjection to the Holy Ghost, amen? Uh -huh. and, and, and that's what Paul is saying here. Don't, don't act like the world, but transform by the renewing of your mind. You got to renew, which means to strip away the old and bring on the new. Now turn with me to Ephesians chapter four. Amen, praise God. Ephesians chapter four and verse 23 
We're talking about overcoming them deadly emotions. You know, just because you become born again does not mean, you know, that, you know, everything is just going to be perfect. Just because you're born again. No, and that's why Paul said, man, listen, you're going to have to renew your mind. Yeah. Because when you became born again, the spirit of man become brand new. But his mind or his soul, his mind, will, and emotions, and his body, mm -hmm. uh, Paul said, uh, uh, bring your body under subjection. And then he goes on to say, renew your mind. Amen. Why? Because there's some work that needs to be done. Did your soul get saved when you became saved? No. Did your body become saved when you became born again? No. Your spirit man became brand new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He's a new creature. Talking about on the inside. But there's still some work that's got to be done on your mind and your body. And that's where, again, we're talking about the soul of man, his mind, will, and emotions, specifically his emotions. And when you don't control your emotions, they can become what? Deadly emotions. Amen. But Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. Once again, Paul now writing to the church, writing to church, save folk. Writing to the church, save people, born again people. Yeah. He said, and be renewed where? In the spirit of your mind. Uh, so a transformation must take place. Amen. Uh, we got to deal with our thoughts, huh? our mind, will, and emotions. All right. So let's move on. Let's, let's begin to talk about how to overcome deadly emotions. So thus far, we have covered five different emotions, as I said earlier, and that is what? Anger. We talked about anger. We talked about pride. We talked about lust, which is an inordinate desire for a person or a thing. And then we talked about fear. And then we talked about worry last Sunday. Amen. Now, we are not to be driven or controlled by deadly emotions. We are not supposed to be driven or controlled. Who are not supposed to be? Us born again believers, Christians. Uh, those been washed in the blood of Jesus, whichever way you want to say it. Those of us that's filled with the spirit of God. and Man, we're not supposed to be driven or controlled by deadly emotions. That's right. That's right. No, it's okay to have emotions, but not emotions to have you. Out of control emotions can lead to deadly results. Out of control emotions can lead to deadly results. All right. So how do you overcome deadly emotions? Let us begin to uh, digest this now. Number one, you got to exercise some temperance. Whoa. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We must operate in temperance. You got to have some temperance. Somebody said, well, what's temperance? That's self-control. Yeah. Huh? Uh, in order to deal with deadly emotions, in order to deal with these emotions that can get out of control, you're going to have to have some discipline. That's good, sir. It's going to require some discipline. Yes, it's not going to happen just automatically. Mm -hmm. You're not just going to automatically be in control. Mm -hmm. It don't work like that. And we've already talked about that. Once again, there's nothing wrong with emotions, but you got to temper those emotions. You got to control emotions, yeah. not emotions control you. When emotions control you, then you're out of control. Mm -hmm. Okay? Amen. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 25. Paul writing to the church at Corinth, writing to the saints. He said, and every man that striveth for the mastery is what? Temperate in all things yeah. temperate or he's got to have control in all things uh, now they that do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible crown so I looked up the word temperance not only does it mean uh, you know self control but you'll start seeing words like discipline discipline uh, another word that they brought out was strict strict you got to be disciplined. You got to be strict or serious training. 
I thought that was interesting uh, that the dictionary would bring that out like that. It's a serious training or some training is necessary. <laughs> yeah, that's some serious. Well, we're going to talk more about that. And now, how, how do we train? By the renewing of our mind. How do you, how do you renew your mind? With the word of God. Uh, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 talks about that if thou shalt meditate in God's word day and night. Meditate means to chew upon, to think upon. Uh, he said, I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. See, but you got to meditate God's word. You got to go over God's word over and you got to chew. It means to meditate means to chew just like an old cow that chews on that cud, that grass. He just chew it and chew it. I know when I went to Bible school and of course that was back, my goodness, what was that? 1980, 80, 81, 82 through 83. Uh, I went to school in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma at Rama Bible Training. Back then it was center. Now it's Rama Bible Training College. But, but man, sometimes I had to walk to school because I, I disobeyed my daddy. He told me, son, I was so young, but what, about 19? He said, you just make sure you change the oil in your car or you'll throw a ride. Well, you hard head, you didn't listen. What happened? I threw a ride, so I had to walk to school. And that was at least three or four miles to get to school, you know. And now, where are you going with this? Well, I said that to say this. I used to run into, now back in that day, uh, Broken Arrow was not, uh, uh, you know, sophisticated as it is today. It, it was just country. I mean, real, real country. And they had bulls and goats and just all kind of animals, you know, uh, that belong on a farm. And so I sat back and I watched some of them cows just sit there. As I was walking, I looked back. Them cows just sit there and do what? Chew and chew and now, 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 just chew on their cud. They chew on their grass like seem like all day. Well, that's what the word meditate means. Yeah. That you need to chew on God's word. Meditate God's word. Huh? If you abide in me and my words do what? Abide in you, which means to live in, dwell in, take up residence in you. Live in, dwell in, take up residence in you. So, you know, we got some work to do, guys. Amen. Praise God. And that's all a part of being temperate in all things. Mm -hmm. So temperance is self-control, discipline. Another word was strict, serious training. Also means to refrain, refrain, and to abstain, refrain and abstain. So all this requires discipline. If we're going to, uh, 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 temper our emotions, get them under control, it's going to require some discipline. Amen. It's going to require some temperance. Amen. Now, turn with me to Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs chapter 25. Are you learning something? Yeah. Proverbs chapter 25. Now, this, this ain't going to just be a tiptoe through the tulips, guys. We got a little work to be done here yeah. because you got to get them emotions under control. You can't just be out of control emotionally. You know, you, you, boy, you're going to hurt people. You're going to hurt yourself, most of all. Yeah. Then you're going to hurt other people. Just, I mean, where it stopped, nobody knows. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't put a lid on sin. Sin, I hear you doing stuff way beyond your imagination. Sure. You got to get these emotions wow. under control. And one way you're going to have to exercise some disciplines, some temperance, some self-control. Amen. And that's by getting in the word of God. Amen. Praise God. I said that's by getting in the word of God. Now, Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 28 says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Wow. And if you read that from another translation, it says here, He that hath no rule over his own spirit or has no self-control. It said, well, you don't have no self-control, uh, you, you know, you, <laughs> it's like a broken down without wall, a city that's broke down. Another translation said, it's like windows busted out, doors and windows busted down. Wow. Yeah. When well, you don't have no self-control, it's like all the windows in your house are busted out, the doors are broke down. Remember what I said? I said, we got to do what? 
you know, you got you to gotta secure all the windows, shut the doors and seal up the cracks. But when you don't have no control in your life, no discipline, uh, no training, you buck wild. Your emotions will be all over the place. Next thing you know, you'll be in offense. Next thing you know, people can't talk to you. You're all over the place. Your emotions are out of control, and it's going to require some discipline. Well, I'm going to call my pastor. Well, you can call your pastor. He can pray for you until you all your hair fall off your head. He can anoint you with so much Crisco oil, cod liver oil. I, I, tell, I don't care what kind of oil that you're using, peanut oil. What kind of oil do you want? We can pray for you all day, but it's going to require some discipline. Yes. Which means you're going to have to get involved. And the only way that you're going to discipline yourself, it's going to have to be by the Holy Ghost. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. You're going to have to get into the Word of God. Huh? You got to do this on purpose. It's not just going, well, I've been saved now, and I'm just waiting on everything that just happened in my life. No, I'm waiting on my mind to get renewed. Are you studying God's word? Are you meditating God's scripture? Amen. Are you in the word of God like you ought to be? Huh? Is God's word abiding in you? Nope. Well, how do you think you're going to have some discipline in your life? Your emotions will be out of control. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. I, you know, I was thinking about, uh, <laughs> I don't know why it keep popping up in my head. One, one, one particular Wednesday night, this was years ago. This had to be over 20 years ago. I had somebody to go in and I didn't go to service that night. Neither did my wife. You know, we just had to take a break, guys. You know, you got to get a break every now and then. And, and, and so... I had somebody to go in there and just to kind of watch to see what's going on. Because you know when the cat's away, you finish it. Yeah, the mice will play, won't they? And so they just went just to check in, you know, not to, not to be negative and all that. They just checked in. <laughs> so when service was over with, you know, they came back. I don't know if we talked to them on the phone or whatever or, or how we talked to them. Face to face or by way of telephone. It don't matter. Well... One of my little spiritual sons told me, he, he was a young man. He, I'm not, some of y'all trying to figure out who, who I'm talking about. I ain't telling you. I'm not telling. But this was years ago. He came, he came back and said, he said, a Bishop Wright, Pastor Wright, you know. Oh, man. That person that was up speaking had out of control savvy. Out of control savvy. <laughs> <laughs> savvy, you know, of course, it had to be a young person, right? Because I was like, listen at the verbiage of what they're saying. I thought it was funny, and my wife thought it was funny, too. And we kind of laughed. Pastor, boy, that person had out of control savvy. <laughs> that's a new phrase for y'all that's listening in. Out of control savvy. What is that? S-A-V-V-Y? Something like that. Savvy. Just out of control. Well, that's what you'll have. You'll be out of control savvy, man. You'll be all over the place if you don't get into the Word of God and allow the Word of God uh, uh, to temper your emotions. Amen? Amen? How about Romans chapter 6? I never will forget that story. I'll never forget it. Uh, uh, the, the young man came back and said, Pastor, that person had out of control savvy. They were all over the place, Pastor. And of course, you know, we, we just laughed. You know, we thought it was funny because of the verbiage of what they said. And, uh, hey, man, I ain't going to tell you what I did. I'm not going to tell you. Look at you trying to figure out what I did. Don't worry about that. Hey, Amen. But they were just out of control all over the place. Why? Pastor wasn't there. Why is it that when the leader ain't there, people try to just get out of control, start doing stuff that they normally wouldn't do when pastor was there? Uh, just a thought. Just a thought, amen, right. pray. I know you don't do that, do you? No, now, do you? Huh? No. But you remember, you know, for some of you that's got a little age on you, it's just amazing. Parents, some of you got a little age on you, uh -huh. and you didn't have kids and all this, and, and they grew up, especially teenagers, you know. Uh -huh. It's amazing when you go away for a day or two, yeah. and let's say you left them at the house, you come back, they just out of control savvy. <laughs> they start doing stuff that they don't normally do with mom and dad at the house, right? In fact... We all probably did it. I can put both both hands up. I put I put my feet up, both legs up. 
Yeah, you know, when mom and dad ain't there, people try to do stuff. Man, who told you? You don't do that with mom and dad out here. How I many you know you always had one little sibling, one brother or sister that would bust on everybody? Just tell off on everybody. Mom, mom, daddy, he did, did, he did that. <laughs> Just the thought guy. Well, you know what? The same thing happens at church sometimes. Sometimes. You know, when the pastor ain't there, when the cat ain't there, the mice will play. How did we get off on that? Oh, my God. Yeah. Out of control. Uh huh. Out of control savvy. Out of control. Amen. Praise God. Romans chapter 6. Uh, let's pick up at verse 12. Again, we're talking about temperance. You, you got to have some temperance. Verse 12, Paul writing to the church, he said, let not, the understood subject is you and I, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but, I love this, yield yourselves unto God. As those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. But that's going to require some discipline. It said yield yourself to God. Yes. Find a neighbor and tell them yield yourself to God. Yes. And, and uh, you, uh, we're not specifically talking about physically. Now you can include that. But we're talking about mentally, soulishly. Yes. I, mind, will, and emotions. You're going to have to yield your emotions to God. Mm -hmm. Find a neighbor and tell them yield. Your emotions, your emotions to God. To God. Yeah, you got to yield them over to God. Amen. Yeah. I said, Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to make a statement that's very true. And I want you to listen to it. I'm going to say it the first time, then I'm going to say it to you the second time so you can get the revelation on it or get a better understanding. Yeah. It is very important to bring deadly emotions to the forefront or into the light. When we bring things out in the open, those deadly emotions begin to lose their grip in our lives. Yeah. Let me say it again. It's important that we bring deadly emotions to the forefront or bring it out into the light. When we bring these things out open into the light, those deadly emotions begin to lose their grip in our lives. Now, I kind of get this statement from my wife. She said something once that has stayed with me. It's, it, you know, it's just on the inside of me. She said, Satan gets his power from anonymity. That's right. Satan gets his power from anonymity, which means concealment and things hidden and secrecy. Yes. Huh? Yes. It means concealment, you know, when you're hiding things hidden and secrecy. But when we bring it into the light or out in the open, it loses its power over us. That's right, that's right. It loses its power over us. And that's the reason why we went through, you know how Paul said that we should not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Mm -hmm. That's why we went over these five deadly emotions. And of course, there are many more, which was anger, pride, lust, fear, and worry. Yeah. Because we wanted you to know so you wouldn't be ignorant of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and you got to bring this stuff out. And when you bring this stuff out, it loses its power. Yeah. Uh, now, number two, how do you overcome deadly emotion? You got to stand fast in God's liberty. Stand fast in God's liberty. Turn with me to, well, since we're there, Romans chapter 6 and verse 11. Yeah, Romans chapter 6 and verse 11. Stand fast. Huh? Be unmovable. Steadfast, unmovable. In God's liberty or in your liberty, in your freedom. Verse 11, Paul said, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Reckon yourself to be dead to sin. But what? Alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So dead to sin, but you're now what? Alive unto Christ. Yes. Stand fast in that. Now turn with me to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Yes, we got to walk in our liberty, man. Whom the Son has set free, he's free indeed. Yes. And you got to walk in the liberty of God. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Again, number 2 is stand fast in God's liberty. Yes. 
Galatians 5 verse 1 said, Stand fast, be unmovable, be sturdy, dig in, therefore into the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not, I love this scripture here, beautiful, beautiful, just brings the point on home. It says, stand fast therefore in what? In the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. And be not entangled. Get wrapped up and all tangled back up again with what? The yoke of bondage. Don't get back into all them deadly emotions again. God has set you free from offense. Huh? He set you free from anger and pride and lust and fear and worry. He said, don't get back into all that mess. Exercise some temperance. Huh? Walk in your liberty, which is where? In Christ Jesus, not in ourselves. It said, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Walk in the liberty that Jesus has liberated you. And then don't go back to getting all tangled up, like verse 1 said. Uh, don't be entangled again with that yoke of bondage, that mess you came out of. Don't get back into all that mess. Mad at the drop of a hat, you read the fight. Read to cuss out somebody. Don't get, Paul said, don't get back entangled. He's talking to the church in Galatia. He said, don't get back into all that mess. You've been set free by Jesus. Don't get back into all that mess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How about John's Gospel That's chapter good. 8? That's good, That's That's good. good stuff, y'all. Yes, John's God. Gospel chapter 8. Don't go back to all that. Now, you know, B.C., before Christ, oh, man, to drop a hat, everybody read the fight. Sure. Folk cussing out, folk mad at everybody, offended at everything, uh -huh. and, and just emotions are out of control, lusting, pride, angry all the time, full of fear, scared of everything, mm -hmm. scared of your own shadow, mm -hmm. and all you ever did was worry, worry, I'm worried about this, worried about that. And Paul said, don't get back into all that mess. Uh -huh. Don't be entangled again with that mess. Walk in your liberty, which can be found in Christ Jesus. John's Gospel, chapter 8. John's Gospel, chapter 8. Let's take a look at verse 32. John's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 32. Oh, well, let's back up verse 31, man. I just looked at 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word. See, that's temperance. That's self-control. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Now watch verse 32. This is what we want to zero in on. And you shall know the truth. See, see when you continue. Ah, let's stop. Hadn't planned on talking about this. I'm going to touch it and run for the border. You got to continue in God's word. You got to dwell there. Ongoing. Continue me ongoing. Process. Moving forward. Continue in my word. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, live in, dwell in, take up residence in you. Continue in my word. Then you'll become a true follower of me. Huh? And then, see, once you do that, I love verse 32. Yeah. And you shall know the truth then. Mm -hmm. In other words, revelation, knowledge will come to you. It'll no longer just be Logos, the written word, but it'll become the rhema, the spoken alive word. Yeah. That is, if you continue, when you continue, when you abide, yeah. when you meditate, yeah. that, that, that Logos, you know, that's found in your Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you know, Logos, the written word. Yeah. It's just paper and ink. But when you continue to meditate, amen, when you continue in there, when you abide in there, it'll go from Logos to turn into what? Rhema, the spoken alive word. That's when freedom, that's when you'll learn how to walk in your freedom. That's when you'll control and temper your emotions. You got to get into the word, man. You ain't careful, you'll be out there cussing. You'll be mad at everybody. Always offended, falling out with folk just all over the all over the place. Like my little young spiritual son said, just, you know, you just out of control savvy. You just out of control. You're all over the place. Can't nobody say nothing to you. You know, you 
Shoot, you want to be in front of the bus, middle of the bus, back of the bus. You want to be the bus. Why? You out of control. And you need to get into the word of God and allow God's word to temper you. I like that. Allow God's word to temper you, yes, temper yes, your emotion. Yes, yes. And when you get your emotions tempered, see, now you got soul prosperity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, just like soul John soul said, prosperity. even as your soul prosper, now you will experience soul prosperity. Oh, my goodness. Verse 32, I'm trying to get through that's it. To, and you shall know the truth. That's when you'll know the truth. And then the truth will do what? That's Make you free. Mm -hmm. Then you jump over there to verse 36. Again, the second thing is stand fast in God's liberty. Verse 36 says, and if the son therefore make you free, mm -hmm. you shall be free indeed. Indeed means shown up. <laughs> you shown up free. Oh, you be free. But you got to continue in that word. And that's the key. The word, the key word is continue in the word. Not just pick your Bible up. Man, you can pick the Bible up and ain't got no revelation. Uh, why? Because God's word is spiritually discerned. The, the letter killeth, but the spirit quickeneth. You want the word of God to be quickened to you. Well, God's word will come alive. God's word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. One translation says, God's word, it's alive. Yeah. It's alive. God's word is alive. Yeah. But you got to stay in that word and continue and abide. And next thing you know, that, that word of just, oh, revelation knowledge. The light will turn on. Ding. Ding, that light will turn on. Yeah, there it is right there. I got it, I got it, I got it. Yes. Now, when you get to that place, see, then you'll be able to temper your emotions. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> Glory to God. God. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. You're getting something out of this? Romans chapter 8. Yes, sir. We talk about stand fast in God's liberty. Stand fast in God's liberty. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Yeah. It said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who, how many know we look a whole lot better in Christ than out of Christ? I said, how many of you know we look a whole lot better in Christ than out of Christ? Amen. To them which are in Christ Jesus, who what? Who walk not after the flesh. How often do you walk? Every day. It is a habitual thing. Remember, if you continue in my word. Remember, we just read that. If you continue in the word. Well, continue implies walking every day. Habitually. Okay. Who walk not after the flesh. But after the spirit, I love verse two, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death, which is in this world. But you got to walk in that. You got to walk in the law of the spirit of life in Christ, who you are in Christ, in him. In whom? Who you are in Christ. Walk in your authority as a believer. Walk in Christ. Then you'll be able to temper your emotions. That's why it's important to find out who you are in Christ. Amen. You can find out all that other stuff, but you got there's certain things you just got to know. You got to know who you are in Christ. In him, in whom? In Christ, in Jesus. And as you do that, then you'll, you'll walk in the law of the spirit of life. You got to stand fast in your liberty. Yes, All right, number three, winding down. Turn with me to Daniel chapter one. That's good, sir. That's good. Daniel chapter one. I don't have no real special answers for you. Oh, oh, God's good. word. You may have a lot of different deadly emotions going on, uh -huh. but there's just one answer to all of it. That's just one answer to all of you. You're going to have to get in the word of God. Yeah. You're going to have to. I don't care how many daily emotions you got going on in your life. I don't care how many problems you got in your life. There might be many problems, but there's always one answer. <laughs> Only one answer. So uh, you can search high, you can search low, you can search all over the world. It is in him we live, move, and have our being. It's always the answer will be found in Christ. 
So you, you know, it's not in all this other junk around here. You try to figure out how to temper your emotions. I'm gonna go over here and do this. I'm gonna get me a drink, a great big drink. Get me a big doobie, a big stogie. I'm gonna get me plenty of sex and lust and go get me worry about it. No, those are wrong kind of drinks. Boy, you need a drink of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Bible says be being filled. Boy, it denotes the more you stay filled with the Holy Ghost is the more you will temper your emotions. Glory to God. Be being filled. There's one initial feeling, but as you continue to see God, there are additional feelings. Amen. Feelings. Yeah, that's the word. There are additional feelings of the Holy Ghost. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. Let me get to it. I'm running now. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. <laughs> I'm ready to get to that. I ain't. Come on, just hold on. Let me set this thing up. Let me set it up. Be being filled. Come My, come you on, stay full God. of the Holy Ghost. Yes, you God. will temper your emotions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me get a little water. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I didn't stir me a little self up here. Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. But Daniel purpose. Let me tell you, I ran into the scripture a few years back. And that thing has been on me, man. I mean, you got to do things on purpose. Jot that down. Oh. You must do things on purpose, which means you got to make a bona fide effort. You got to make a bona fide effort to do right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you got to do things on purpose, man, or it's not going to happen. Trust me. I done tried it. Look, all of us have tried to do things and, and it wasn't on purpose. And, uh, you know, we was a little nonchalant about it. You know, we were kind of nonchalant about it. You know, the same thing, we're trying to lose weight. You can't be nonchalant about losing weight. You, you got to do some certain things on purpose. You got to make up in your mind what you're going to do or you're going to keep doing all them bad things, you know, or whatever you want to call it, negative, bad things that make you lesser of a person or whatever. Amen. You got to do certain things on purpose. Yes. So what's the third thing? Commitment and dedication. Ooh. If we going to overcome these deadly emotions and the thing, and you know what? You got to be careful how, how I say this because see, Christ has already overcome all this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's, he, he, he overcame all these deadly emotions yes. Yes, uh, over 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. All we got to do now is maintain the victory. But we're talking about how to walk it out. That's what we're talking about now. How to maintain the victory over these deadly emotions. Maybe I should have changed the title of my sermon. Called how to maintain the victory. Because Christ has already victored it. Huh? He's already conquered it. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And now we just got to maintain the victory. The battle has already been fought. The victory has been won. By who? Jesus. He's the greater one. He did it over 2,000 years ago. He whooped the devil, knocked his teeth out, empowered by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now we just, now we got to walk in our victory. Uh, stand fast in our liberty. We just got to maintain the victory now. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. It, it just, you know what? Basically, I can say it's about maintenance. <laughs> we just got to maintain maintenance. Yeah. Maintenance. Yeah. maintenance, just maintenance, maintenance, uh, uh -huh. whichever way you want to say it, hey, amen. You just got to maintain now because he already fixed it long time ago. Now you just got to maintain it. You, you got to maintain it. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. All right, Daniel chapter one, verse eight. But Daniel purpose in his heart that he would not what? Defile himself. That's the key. We're not going to read all, all of this, but he purposed in his heart not to defile himself. Mm -hmm. In other words, he was sold out to God. Mm -hmm. Daniel made a choice and decision not to defile himself with the king's meat, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the king's diet, meat and all the other stuff. Daniel chose his own uh, way that he was going to eat and wound up on top of everything. Uh, 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 that he was much stronger and more healthier and those that were with him were much stronger and healthier uh, than who the king gave his meat to. The point is not the meat and the diet and all that. The point here is David purpose in his heart. Yeah. And that's the point I want to get across to you today. If we're going to temper our emotions, hey, you're going to have to make a commitment 
and you're going to have to be dedicated to something. You're going to have to purpose in your heart. I'm not getting offended no more. I'm not going to walk in anger and pride and lust and fear and worry. I'm not doing that. You're going to have to make a decision. Uh huh? You're going to have to make a decision not to defile yourself. When you get over into these daily emotions, you defile yourself. So you're going to have to make a commitment. Amen. I said, amen. amen. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. See what Paul had to say about this. And you know, we found out what Daniel said. He said, hey, you know, I purpose in my heart. I ain't doing that. You got a purpose in your heart. You got to make up in your mind. I don't care what program that you may go to from the natural, whether it's AAA means or whatever kind of substance abuse or whatever abuse that you're doing. One of the first things that they're going to tell you is you got to make up in your mind. You got to make up in your mind what you're going to do. And until you make up your mind, you can spend all your money, put your house up, sell your cars if they pay it off, sell your cars, sell your house. You can spend a million dollars on self-help, uh -huh. but until you make up in your mind. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. All right. Yeah. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. I wonder how Paul looked at this thing. Paul said, who or what is going to separate us from the love of Christ? So tribulation? Boy, Paul's something else, ain't he? He's up. Yeah. So tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Drop down verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him, uh -huh. through Christ. Yeah. We're more than conquerors through Christ yeah. that loved us. I like verse 38. Paul said, I am now persuaded. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, principality, nor powers, nor things present, yeah. nor things to come. Yeah. Verse 39. Nor height, nor yeah. death. Nor any other creature. I don't care who they are. I don't care if they're from Mars, Jupiter, aliens. He said, I don't care who they are. They, they shall not separate me from the love of God. And that's the attitude that we got to have, God. I don't care how fine he is or how fine she is. I don't care what country they from, what side of the track they grew up on. I don't care what school they didn't went to. I don't care if they aliens from Mars. I don't care if Paul said, ain't nothing going to separate me from the love of God. Why? Because I have decided to follow Jesus like the old song. No turning back. No, no, no turning back. You got to make up in your mind. What did Daniel say? I purposed in my heart. Now Paul is saying, I ain't going to let nothing separate me from the love of God. Yes. You got to be determined. How about Acts chapter 20? Acts chapter 20. Something else. Let me tell you, that Paul was something else, y'all. I, I tell you, he was the chiefest of the sinners. Sometimes it seemed like, man, the chiefest of the sinners wound up being the best disciples. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 24. That Paul was bold. Even before, you know, back when he was Saul, he was bold then. He was persecuting the church, killing folk, all kinds of stuff. That Saul was something else. Then he got changed on the road to Damascus. And then God took that boldness and converted it over into the kingdom business. Kingdom business. And Paul became even more bold. In fact, Paul said, I'm bold to live and bold to die. <laughs> he 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 goes on to say that the righteous are bold as a lion. Yes, yes, That's that Paul. Yes, That's yes. the kind of commitment you got to have. And I love what he said in Acts chapter twenty, verse twenty four, verse twenty four. I'll give you a minute to get there. Uh huh. Verse twenty four. He said, "But none of these things, just part A, what? but none of these things move me." Ooh, no, I'm going to read the whole verse. I ain't stopping right there. I know my clock, my time is ticking. But Paul said, look, none of this mess moved me. And that's how we would say it. To say, none of these things, we don't talk like that. None of this mess going to move me. Yes. <clears throat> Neither count I my life dear unto myself. I ain't concerned with me. So that I might what? Finish my course with joy. 
and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of grace of God. Man, I didn't preach myself happy. I said, I done preach myself happy. Come on, y'all. We got to finish this. We got to finish this series. Number four. Number four. Amen. So number three was commitment and dedication. Number four, uh, you got to yield to the Holy Ghost. Go back to Romans chapter six. And now I got to get going here real quick, y'all. Y'all give me a little time. We ain't been in person service. Hang in there with me. Amen. I'm going to be concluding today. So give me just a little bit. Give me just a little bit of, a little bit of time. There. Amen. Yes, Romans chapter 6. Verse 13. <clears throat> it says, Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself what? Unto God. As those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Uh, you got to yield to God, man. Yes, For yes, sin yes. shall not have dominion over you. Ooh. For you are not under the law, but you're under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Ooh. I love verse 16. Know ye not. Paul said, know ye not. That to whom you yield yourself, uh -huh. servants to obey. Uh -huh. His servants you are to whom you obey, yes. whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. We're talking about we got to yield ourselves to the Holy Ghost. So I looked up that word yield. Yes. Yield means to be at one's disposal. Ah. To be at one's disposal. It means to be in submission to. Submission means to come under a mission. Sub means under. Come under a mission. Come under a mission. We're talking about yielding to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yield to the Holy Ghost. Come under the Holy Ghost instructions. Amen. Mm -hmm. Also means to surrender to. You need to throw your hands up. That's a universal sign of surrender, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Throw your hands up. Right. Throw them hands up. Throw them hands up. We need to throw our hands up to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We need to throw our hands up to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Throw them hands up. I surrender. I surrender all. It also means to come into agreement with. We talking about yielding to the Holy Ghost. It means to come into agreement with or to comply with. Yeah. <laughs> or to comply with. Mm -hmm. What you trying to say, Pastor? Give the Holy Spirit full control of your life. Mm. Give the Holy Spirit full control of your life. Tell you, there's something about the Holy Spirit, the person and work of the Holy Spirit. Let's say this in conclusion. The Holy Spirit is the enabler. That's why you got to give your life over to the Holy Ghost. And when you yield to the Holy Ghost, let me say, yielding to the Holy Ghost will cause you to temper your emotions. But you got to yield your emotions to the Holy Ghost. You got to yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. Uh, you got to come into agreement with the Holy Ghost. You got to be in submission. Come under the Holy Ghost. What's the Holy Ghost's mission? You got to come under that mission. You got to comply with it. Uh, why? Because see, the Holy Spirit will enable and empower you to live a Christian life. Yes. That's how you're going to be able to live a Christian life. I don't know how many times you hear people say, man, it's so hard to live this Christian life. Woo, it's so hard to temper these emotions. No, it's not. You got to walk in the liberty wherewith God has set you free. You got to yield yourself to the Holy Ghost and it'll become an easy thing. The anointing will kick in. Another definition for the anointing is not just power, but means easy. It'll become an easy thing when you come under, when you yield to the Holy Ghost, it'll become an easy thing to be angry and sin not. Huh? It'll become an easy thing to just follow the things of God. Yeah. But you got to come under the mission and submission of the Holy Ghost. You got to yield yourself to the Holy Ghost and he'll come in and he will empower you. Where am I going to get the strength from to, to, to back away from that deadly emotion? The Holy Ghost strength. The Holy Ghost. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Yeah. Holy Ghost. You can't do this in your own strength. I, I agree with you. 
It's hard to back away trying to do this in your own strength. It's hard not to cuss out somebody. It's hard not to swing on folk. It's hard not to bless folk out. It's hard not to do certain things in your own strength. You are right. That's why you got to do this in Christ. You got to yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. Then it'll become an easy thing. Why? The anointing will kick in and cause you to do what you couldn't do in the natural. Yeah. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says you shall receive power. That comes from the English word dynamite or dunamis. The Greek word is dunamis, which comes from the English word dynamite. You shall receive the very dynamite power and ability of God once the Holy Ghost come on you. Yeah, you'll get that supernatural enablement. You'll receive that power. Why? To temper your emotions. You can't do this in yourself. You'll cuss out to mind in a minute. You'll swing on to mind in a minute. You'll do some crazy stuff. You'll wind up in all these deadly emotions. Trying to trying to just wear out. Let me tell you, Satan will wear out your little uh, your little strength. Your little strength within yourself. You know, he'll just wear out your little will, your little natural will. You got some people who are just naturally good. Let me tell you, the devil will wear out your little natural good. You got to do this by the Holy Ghost. I said, you got to do this by the Holy Ghost. Yeah, some people just, at what they say, good natured. Just good people. Now, Satan, now wear your little good nature out. Why? Wow, he's persistent and consistent. You got to do these things by the Holy Ghost. And you'll be surprised. Let me tell you, you'll be shocked. Woo, I can't believe I resisted that. Woo, I can't believe I resisted lust. Woo, I can't believe that I resisted anger. Woo, I can't believe that I resisted fear. Woo, I can't believe I resisted worry. Woo, I can't believe that I resisted pride. Well, you did it by the Holy Ghost. Because you try to do it within your own little self, you'll wind up in every one of those five deadly emotions. Amen. I said amen. Glory to God. The disciples witnessed the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to live within us. The Holy Spirit will lead and guide us. Huh? He'll teach us all things. He'll bring all things to our remembrance. Turn with me to John 14. John 14 as we close. This is good, sir. That's why you need the Holy Ghost, man. People talking about everything but the Holy Ghost. Talking about everything but the Holy Spirit. Talking about all this stuff, man. You can't do nothing apart from God. You, you can't do nothing without the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost energized Jesus. That's how he got up out that grave. That's how he got out of hell. Why? The Holy Ghost empowered Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God over there in Colossians. He energized Jesus, man. And since that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, dwells in us, he'll quicken or make alive our mortal bodies. Holy Ghost will help you to temper them little emotions. Uh, them little emotions ain't nothing for the Holy Ghost. It ain't no job for the Holy Ghost. Oh, that's small stuff. But we got to do things in Christ, in Christ. In the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We got to yield ourselves to the Holy Ghost. Yield ourselves to the Holy Ghost. Yield your tongue to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I was at a meeting, I guess about a year ago. Pastor Mark Hankins looked at me and he kept saying it over and over and over. Yeah, sure I'm in Detroit at Bishop Butler's convention uh -huh. and Mark just come right over there to me. I don't know how many times. Mm -hmm. He just pointed at me. He looked at me. No, he didn't point. He just looked at me eye to eye several times. He said, yield your tongue to the Holy Ghost. Yield your tongue to the Holy Ghost. Then he walked away and came back again. Yeah, yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. Yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. I took it personal. Go. I took it. Hey, that's Jesus talking to me through another man, through his yes. servant. I took it personal and went and did an in-depth study huh? on yield your tongue to the Holy Ghost. Yield your eyes to the Holy Ghost. Yield your mind to the Holy Ghost. Yield your body to the Holy Ghost. Yield yourself to the Holy Ghost and you'll temper all these little emotions. You'll temper the flesh. You'll temper your thoughts. Yes. You'll temper your emotions. Yes. You got to yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. Yes, 
come under his influence. Be influenced by the Holy Ghost. Be at his disposal. As we define that word yield, means to be at one's, be at the Holy Ghost's disposal. It means to be in submission. Be in submission to the Holy Ghost. It means to surrender. Surrender to the Holy Ghost. It means to come into agreement. Come into agreement with the Holy Ghost. Oh, it means to comply with. Comply with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Yeah. And you'll be able to deal with all these little deadly emotions and whatever they call itself. Yeah, you'll be able to deal with all this mess. You got to yield to the Holy Ghost. Not, not all this other junk folk teaching. You think you're in Disney World. Man, we ain't in no Disney World. We're at war. Fight. The good fight of faith. We're at war. <laughs> I done teach, taught myself happy here. I'm about to do a Holy Ghost jig. Got to do a Holy Ghost jig. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What did I say? St. John 14, verse 16, and then we'll shut it down. This is good, sir. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus said in verse 16, and I will pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, that's the Holy Ghost, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwells where? With you and shall be in you. He said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will come to you. Then pick up verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall do what? Teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto him. Uh -huh. I like verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So the disciples, in closing, they witnessed the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to live within us. The Holy Spirit will lead and guide you and, and teach you all things. Jump over there real quick, St. John 16, verse 13. I ain't going to wait on you. St. John 16, verse 13. <clears throat> How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, is come that he'll guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he'll show you things to come. Ooh. Talking about the personal work of the Holy Spirit. When you yield yourself to the Holy Ghost, see, let me tell you, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Well, who's the great teacher? The Holy Ghost. <laughs> when you are ready, when you're ready, boom, Holy Spirit's right there. He's right there waiting on you. Quit saying I'm waiting on the Holy Ghost. No, you're not waiting on the Holy Ghost. He's waiting on you to get out of you, get rid of you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. why Paul said, I pray that I decrease and that Jesus increase. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, I die daily. He's not talking about physically dying daily. Mm -hmm. He's talking about dying on the inside. Because mm -hmm. when you die, uh, then Christ arises. <laughs> get out of the way and, and follow the Holy Ghost <laughs> glory to God hallelujah the Holy Spirit creates sensitivity to his impulses the Holy Spirit creates sensitivity to his impulses hallelujah boy I can say so much more about this I could say so much more about this. Oh, that's a sermon in by itself. Ooh. Yield to the Holy Ghost. Yes. We may have to teach that one day. Yes. How to yield to the Holy Ghost. Then you'll be able to temper all these deadly emotions. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. So I trust that you got something out of the word of my God goodness. today. Yes. My, I done taught myself happy. I done did my Holy Ghost jig. Hey Amen. I tell you, God is good all the time. Amen. All heads about, eyes are closed. Perhaps there might be someone here that don't know Jesus Christ. 
as their Lord and personal Savior. There might be somebody watching me on face, Facebook Live. And you may say, well, I don't know nothing about no Holy Spirit. Yeah, Jesus said you must be born again. Yeah. Today is a day of salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 say, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I want to pray with you today. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you repeat this prayer along with me. And I'm going to encourage everybody to repeat with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father I come to you today. Having read in your word, in your word you, said, Lord, you said, Lord, if I confess with my mouth, with my mouth that, Jesus Lord, that Jesus is Lord, and if I believe in my heart, in my heart that God raised you from the dead, you, from you, the said, dead Lord, you said, Lord, that I'll be born again. Be born again. So right now, Lord, so right now, Lord I, call upon you. I call upon you. I accept you right now, accept you right now into my life. Into as my Lord, Savior, and Master. And, Lord, Savior, and, Master. and I believe in my heart, in my heart that God raised you from the dead, from the on, dead. The third day. on the third day. I thank you, Lord. I, you, Lord. I receive you now. I, you I now. turn from my old ways, my old and I turn ways. to you now, Lord. Lord, Lord, make something wonderful, make something wonderful out, of my life. out of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. How about that? Hallelujah. Welcome to the body of Christ. Glory. Welcome to the family of God. Yes. We love you. We want to encourage you to get yourself in a good church home where you can grow and develop and become everything that God wants you yes. to be. Yes. Oh yes. my goodness. This is the day the Lord has made. Yes. This is your day. This is a day of new beginnings for you. Yes. Amen. You're right now born again. The Bible says the angels in heaven are rejoicing over one person that gets born again. Yes. And man, we're just so excited for you. Yes. Boy, we're so excited for you. We're so happy for you. We want to encourage you to continue to watch us on Facebook Live on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock p.m. We love you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, how many were blessed by the word today? Amen. I said, how many of y'all were blessed by the word today? Amen. I tell you, God's word is rich. Yes. And we can grow and develop and become everything that God wants us to be. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, it's opportunity to prosper time. Glory. And it's time for giving. Let me just quote a few things for you. The Bible says to give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. And the Bible goes on to say that God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. What you need is wrapped up in your seed. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So I don't care what you believe in God for. The Bible teaches us to sow seed. And the Bible teaches us in Malachi chapter 3. To bring ye all the tithes and offerings into the storehouse. That's the house of God that, we, that you may have meat in mine house. He said, prove me now herewith. Herewith what? Your tithes and offerings. Amen. Mm -hmm. That if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen. Praise God. So I know we got cheerful givers here. God loves a cheerful giver. The more you give to him is the more he'll give to you. You can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. Now we encourage you to give. There are three different ways that we encourage you to give. Number one, through PayPal. Amen. Wow. PayPal, New Beginnings, plural, clc.org. New Beginnings, plural, clc.org. And that's via PayPal. Or second way you can do it is through Cash App. Mm -hmm. And that's at New Beginnings, plural, clc. Amen. You can also Cash App at New Beginnings, plural, clc. Or you can just simply just mail it in at P.O. Box 320-658. At P.O. Box 320-658. And that's Flowood, Mississippi, 39232. Again, Flowood, Mississippi, 39232. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You can't be God's given no matter how hard you try. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Glory to God. I tell you, there's something about giving. Giving is a, it's a type of worship. Mm -hmm. You worship God with your giving. Yeah. Amen. For well, my God shall supply every need, all my needs, yeah. according to his riches, where? In yeah. glory. Yeah. Amen. So we want to just take this time and just thank you guys for continuing to support us, especially during this pandemic season. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. You guys are just so consistent. And you know, the key to giving is consistency. Yes. You got to be consistent. Amen. Yes. Praise God. You got to be consistent with yes. God. Uh, you got to give on purpose. Yes. I don't know about you, but when my wife and I give and we're big givers, yes. we give with a purpose. We're not just giving just to be given. Amen. Praise God. We're giving back. Amen. To continue the kingdom of God can go forth. Where yes. new beginnings can continue to feed people and clothe people and help people. Yes. That's what giving is all about. Amen. And, and you don't think about it. God only requires 10%. He just acts with 10% and the other 90% you can do what you want. You know. Yes. Amen. Praise God. So we just want to encourage you guys. Continue to be consistent. Continue to be consistent in Jesus' name. Well, let's hold up our tithes and offerings, and let's hold them up to our great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we do come the honor and the privilege to give this day. And Lord, we thank you that as we give, that you'll give back to us good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over should men get back to our bosom. And Lord, we thank you that as we give, it'll cause new beginnings to continue to enlarge its tents so that we can reach out to the world uh, with the glorious gospel, that more people will become born again, more minds renewed, bodies healed, ultimately cities won to Christ. Ministering spirits, go forth now and cause our return to come unto us, for we believe that we receive a hundredfold return in this lifetime, wealth and riches will be in our house. And Father, even as we believe in God uh, for a building, Father, that we got favor with you as well as with man, don't make a difference what season that it might be in, God takes care of his own. So Father, we just thank you right now in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Well, we just trust that you guys are... A blessed day today at church today. Amen. Praise the Lord via Facebook Live. Amen. Don't forget next Sunday we will be celebrating the First Lady's birthday. Amen. Whichever way that you want to be a blessing to her, as the three different ways that, that I mentioned during the offering time, or whatever, you're sending letters, uh, 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 money, I, I don't care which way you do it, how you do it. Amen. But those are the three ways that you can be a blessing to her. Her birthday is actually on October 29th, but we're going to celebrate it next Sunday, which is the Sunday before the 29th. Mm -hmm. So don't forget about that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, this is Pastor Wright once again on behalf of my wife and I. We love you guys and you guys are truly a blessing to us. And we trust that we've been a blessing to you as well. God bless you and have a wonderful day in Jesus' name.